Good evening, everybody, and welcome to this uh, Buddhist Society Monday class, the Theravada class uh, that we're doing via Zoom this evening. And as you know, I'm Sister Chandasiri, Ajahn Chandasiri, and I've been a nun since 1979. I was ordained by Ajahn Vido at Chithurst, along with Sister Rojana, Sister Tanisara. It was a long time ago, and I'm still here. I'm actually at Milntume Hermitage in Scotland, where it's a kind of blustery autumn evening, and with quite a chill in the air, definitely changing seasons. So it's very, very lovely to have this opportunity to spend some time together. As usual, we'll begin with a short puja, and we'll chant in Pali this evening. And one do very kindly is agreed he'll set up the screen share. So if you want to chant along, um, please stay muted. That would be helpful. Um, you're welcome to do so, to join in in whatever way feels meaningful for you. And I'll start off by lighting the candles and the incense. These are the traditional offerings uh, for a shrine to the Buddha, the Dhamma, the Sangha.
Bhagavati Dhanya Bhagavato Sāvata Sāngho Sāngha Namāmi Namayam Bodhasa Bhagavato Pupapaganama Karankarama Namayatasa Bhagavato Harahato Samar Sambodhasa Namayatasa Bhagavato Harahato Samar Sambodhasa Namayatasa Bhagavato Harahato Samar Sambodhasa and the Mayam Buddha, Nindu Satinayan Karuma, say, Kankor Planab Nagawan Tang Ewan Kalayan or Kitisako Habo Katu. It is so Pagawan we chacharana sampanu sugato like a widu anu taro purisadam masaratisa tadhewa manusana hoipo bhagavati. And the young Dhamma be picking Karuma say, Oaka do Bhagavata Dhammo Sandi Piko Akali Koe, he passed the poor open a heap of a chatam way And the Mayan Sankha be to King Karum, and the Mayan Sankha do Sakinayan Karuma say, Supati Tano Bhagavato Sawaka Sanko, Uchupati Tano Bhagavato Sawaka Sanko, Yaya Pati Tano Bhagavato Sawaka Sanko, Sami Chipati Tano Bhagavato Sawaka Sanko, Yadidhan Chatari Purisa Yukaniya Kapurisa Pokala, Esa Bhagavato Sawaka Sanko, Pahuneyo, Pahuneyo, Dakineyo, Anchali Karaniyo, Anuttaram Punya Ketam Dorkatati. I think I'm unmuted. Yep. So, so it's just I'd like to request uh, the determination of the or three repetitions the determination of the five precepts. Okay. To a group from a lay person. From a number. I'm just uh, not quite sure who to bow to, which direction I bow. Maya Maya Tisarane Saha Pancha Silani Achama Lutiampi Maya Maya Tisarane Saha 
Panchasilani Achama Tatiampi Maya Maye Isaranena Saha Panchasilani Achama Everybody is familiar with this ritual that we do each week, the determining of the three refuges, refuge in the Buddha, the capacity each of us has to be awake, to see things clearly, to see through the veils of delusion that all, all of us uh, can experience, uh, taking refuge in the Dhamma or the truth, reality, as we experience it here and now, taking refuge in the Sangha, just recollecting the vast community, the vast family, the lineage of disciples of the Buddha that we're all part of, can provide a tremendous uh, strength and encouragement to us in our practice. So we take refuge in the Buddha, the Dhamma, the Sangha, and then the five precepts, these guidelines uh, on how to live in ways that are going to bring about uh, a diminution of suffering and confusion, both for ourselves and for others. Refraining from killing, from taking life of other creatures, refraining from stealing any kind of dishonesty uh, in, the, in the material way, refraining from sexual misconduct, uh, wrong speech, uh, harmful, false and harmful speech, and refraining from the use of intoxicants. So these are offered as an encouragement, uh, as a support uh, for each one of you in your practice um, of the Buddha's Noble Eightfold Path. So um, I'll recite Namo Tassa three times, a traditional homage, and then after that, uh, Nick will, will lead you all in um, uh, reciting it three times. And we just go line by line after that. Namo Tassa Bhagavato Harahato Sambha Sambodhasa Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato 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 samma sambuddhasa Namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa Buddhang sarananga chami Buddhang sarananga chami Dhammang sarananga chami Dhamam saranam gachami Sangham saranam gachami Sangham saranam gachami Dutiyampi buddham saranam gachami Dutiyampi buddham saranam gachami Dutiyampi dhamman saranam gachami Dutiyampi Dhammam Saranam Gachami Dutiyampi Sangham Saranam Gachami Dutiyampi Sangham Saranam Gachami Tatiyampi Buddham Saranam Gachami Tatiyampi Buddham Saranam Gachami Tatiyampi Dhammam Saranam Gachami Tatiyampi Dhammam Saranam Gachami Tatiyampi Sangham Saranam Gachami Tatiyampi Sangham Saranam Gachami Ti Saranakamana Nititang Other precepts. 
Anatipata, where many seek up a dung, somebody army. Anatipata, where many seek up a dung, somebody army. I undertake the precept to refrain from taking the life of any living creature. I undertake the precepts to refrain from taking the life of any living creature. Adinadana, where of many seek up a dung, somebody hami. Adinadana, where many seek up a dung, somebody hami. I undertake the precept to refrain from taking that which is not given. I undertake the precept to refrain from taking that which is not given. Kame sumi chachara, where up money seek up a dung, somebody hami. Kame sumi chachara, where up money seek up a dung, somebody I undertake the precept to refrain from sexual misconduct. I undertake the precept to refrain from sexual misconduct. Musa wada, where up money seek up a dung, somebody hami. Musa wada, where many seek up a dung, somebody hami. I undertake the precept to refrain from lying. I undertake the precept to refrain from lying. Dura Miraya Majapamada Tana, where of money seek up a dung, somebody hami. Sure Maria, the Karmatana, where money seek up a dung, somebody hami. I undertake the precept to refrain from consuming intoxicating drink and drugs which lead to carelessness. I undertake the precept to refrain from consuming intoxicating drink and drugs which lead to carelessness. Imani pancha sika padani si lena sukha tinyanti si lena boga sampada si lena nebu tinyanti tasama si langwi sotaye Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu. We um, establish the refuges and precepts as the foundation for our practice cultivating right speech, right action, right livelihood. When we have these in place, the mind is untroubled, the mind is peaceful, the mind is calm, or at least it supports peacefulness and calm, which leads us on to meditation. So we'll have a period of meditation now, and uh, I suggest that we keep in mind that our aspiration is to support our inner clarity, inner calm. Um, generally, I encourage using the body, using the breath as focuses for the awareness. These are very present, very immediate in terms of our experience um, in ways that the thinking mind is not. The thinking mind may well continue to be thinking while we sit quietly here. Um, and I suggest that you avoid, if possible, getting drawn in uh, to the thoughts, the ideas that you may be having arising in the mind. So we stay present. You know, our, our whole focus, our whole intention is to be present with things as they are. Just quietly watching. If the mind is busy, we can observe. The mind is busy. If the mind quietens down, is calm and peaceful, we can enjoy that, we can observe that. So for meditation, it's important that we take time to find a suitable posture. So I'm going to sit cross-legged myself, little shift. And I do this because um, Having a nice upright posture supports 
the mind in being nicely alert and attentive. So we're not so peaceful that we're drifting off to sleep. There's a sense of brightness in the mind, a sense of alertness, awareness, curiosity. I usually sit with the eyes closed, but if you're very, very sleepy, it can be helpful to keep them open. And some of you may prefer to keep the eyes open anyway. Either way is fine. Um, but for this time, the awareness is directed inwards. So there's an awareness of the body. This is our basic vehicle, our basic foundation. This body that we've lived with for a great number of years for some of us, um, that we've cared for, that we've fed, rested, exercised, and that we've worked with, done things. We've played. The body is a very uh, important part of our lives. Uh, so we care for the body. We're aware of it. So fully conscious of the body sitting here, the base, our contact with the earth or the chair that we're sitting on. Trunk of the body rising up from the base. The head perched on the top. And we're also aware of the space around the body. These bodies exist in space. We may be on our own or we may be sitting in a room with somebody else, other objects. And this body is an object in space. We take time to set the body at ease, releasing tension from the different parts of the body. So I suggest you take a moment or two just to systematically check through the body. And if there's any tension, to take a deep breath and to imagine that you can breathe through the particular muscles where there's tension, relaxing, setting at ease. So often the face is tense. We've been engaging with people, we've frowned or we've smiled. concentrated so there can be a, a tension around the forehead or the cheeks or the mouth. So we take a moment just to relax the face. time for going inwards, attending to our inner world rather than facing the outer world. We don't need to engage with or impress anybody. It's a time when the face can, can just rest, loose, soft, no particular expression. we make sure, sure that the shoulders are relaxed, allowing them to drop a little. 
breathing through, relaxing, releasing tension from around the shoulder area. We allow the hands to rest on the knee, knees or in the lap, whatever's comfortable for you. We take us through a few lovely, very deep, slow, easy in-breaths, right down into the belly. And then we release from there, breathing out fully and completely. Letting go of all of our cares, our worries, our concerns. Just contemplating the sense of deep ease and well-being throughout the body. This we can do at any time during the day. There's a problem. Stop. Breathe. Fully. Completely. Enjoy. You can relax the legs in the same way. Just breathing down, releasing tension, particularly around the knees. Just feel the muscles of your legs becoming quite soft as you release tension. Body is held nicely upright, but not stiff. A sense of ease, a sense of poise and balance as we sit. Coming to the breath as the main focus for our awareness. Aware of the space around us, aware of sounds in the next room or outside on the street, in the countryside, in the trees wind in the trees. These are things that are there in the background. And we keep the main focus with the body breathing in an easy, natural way. Noticing how it feels to breathe in. <clears throat> what happens with the in-breath? How the chest cavity expands, allowing the air to flow into the lungs. Holding the air for a moment and then noticing the air being compressed out with the out breath. Air. The air of the breathing, the air of the wind outside. All the same air, breath. Following the flow of the breath in and out of the body.
it's helpful to use a word or a short phrase as a reminder, as an extra support, and please feel free to do so. Saying it quietly in your heart. Bud as you breathe in, do as you breathe out, or some secular word or phrase. as far as possible, leaving the thinking to one side, not involving ourselves with it at all, just staying with the breath. And if at any time you notice, have you got caught up with a pattern of thinking, a memory or an idea or a plan, or simply a kind of internal commentary on your performance, just notice that, come back to the breath, come back to the moment, here, now. Staying with the sensations of the body breathing, really feeling it in your body, the movement of the chest wall, other sensations in the body, just notice them, be with them, happening here, happening now. a sense of lightness and ease.
You remember to keep it rather simple. Just one breath. And then the next.
Meditation is for our welfare. We need to keep remembering that rather than seeing it as something that we got to do, that we should do, we might fail at. We do it with an attitude of great kindness. May this being be well. This being be inwardly at ease. Even if the mind is very restless, very agitated, there's still this attitude, may this being be well. Coming into the heart, place of love, of kindliness. May this being be well. May others be well. Breathing in, may this being be well. Breathing out, may others be well. Extending to those in the immediate vicinity, those we share our space with. May they be well, free from every kind of suffering. Extending beyond to our dear ones, wherever they may be, in this country or in other parts of the world. Bringing them into the heart. May they be well, free from every kind of suffering. Our good friends, those we practice with. We bring them into the heart. May they be well. May they be liberated from all suffering, from all dukkha. A sense of ease, a sense of well being. Extending also to our neighbours, our colleagues, the people we see regularly. And particularly any of them that we know are struggling with some kind of difficulty, some kind of sorrow or confusion. Extending this heart of kindness, include them. May they be well, liberated from all dukkha. particularly anyone we know who is dying or who is bereaved, anyone we know who is giving birth, beginning, the end of life. And 
and extending beyond to the countless beings that we don't know, the fortunate ones, those who are experiencing terrible difficulty in their lives, situations of conflict, violence, domestic, political, situations of war, confusion. So whatever way feels meaningful, extending the heart, wishing well to all beings. the oppressors and the victims, whoever they are, whoever they are. I'm taking a moment particularly to consider the beings who have great power great responsibility, great wealth. Considering them, may they also find inner ease, balance, the wisdom, the compassion to fulfill their responsibilities in the best possible way. The benefit of all. And extending this heart of kindliness, of well-wishing over the entire planet and all the creatures, the animals, the plants, animals of the land, animals of the sea and the air, the water, the earth, the atmosphere. May this planet be well, in balance, and taking a moment to extend out far beyond. galaxies, space, mystery of the universe, and all beings everywhere be free from every kind of dukkha, every kind of suffering. And little by little, bringing the awareness back just to this body. Breathing, sitting, wherever we are, may this being be well. May this being be free from every kind of suffering, every kind of struggle. Inwardly at ease balanced.
So often I get asked about situations in the world, difficult situations that we hear about on the news, political situations, situations of war, of conflict, uh, all the awful things that human beings are doing to each other. And there can be a sense of real real helplessness and sometimes a sense of real fear and concern around all these seemingly impossible conflicts or, or situations like the, the situation of the climate and of the different conflicting interests that people have, different concerns it's an irreconcilable opposites. You know, one person wants or needs one thing and one person desperately needs the opposite. What can we do as human beings? And it's a very, um, very important question uh, for all of us. I think it's helpful to um, really stay in stay in touch with our own heart, because sometimes some of the things that we hear, uh, we can be really uh, disturbed, really upset, you know, thrown out of kilter, thrown off balance, uh, into states of fear into states of rage, anger, looking around for someone to blame, judging, criticizing, uh, thinking a lot. You know, when you hear of a, a problem, the mind can immediately start thinking about how to solve it, even though there's maybe absolutely nothing uh, that we as an individual can do to correct the situation. But we, we think about it, we talk about it. It's one of the things people love to do. They love to get together and talk about what should be done about I don't know, different things happening. And the war in Ukraine is an obvious one. So many people have got opinions about what should happen to, to resolve that, how to, how to bring it about, what needs to happen. Uh, pandemic, climate, all these ideas that just go up, uh, disturb the mind. This is natural, this is normal, and it's important for us as Buddhist practitioners to be very aware of it and to really um, begin to see that we have a choice whether to um, simply let the mind be disturbed and get caught up in all of the thoughts, all of the ideas that may be arising, or whether there's perhaps another way of responding that can bring a greater benefit.
my sense is that we actually don't need any more ideas. There are plenty of people uh, who have, who are in positions of power, who have responsibility, um, who can have an influence, who can effect change, who can direct the course of events. I mean, perhaps we're one of those people, in which case um, uh, maybe a different response is, is required. Uh, but I like to think that the meditation that we just did, for example, is something that can um, actually have, a, have an effect. Um, to not underestimate the, the power of, of thought, of intention, wishing well, uh, sending thoughts of, of peace, of kindness uh, into different situations. I mean, of course, we want people to be well, we want people to be happy, we want situations to be resolved. Um, we want the best, the best possible outcome. These are all things that we want, naturally enough. Um, but the best way of uh, bringing these things about is to uh, Establish ourselves in Dhamma. To really trust the, the power of Dhamma, the power of truth in terms of uh, reconciliation. I find in my own life when I've you know, seen a situation that has been difficult or confusing for me, before I was, before I'd done very much practice or meditation, I used to think about things. I used to worry about things. And I spent a lot of time, you know, lose sleep over it, thinking out, you know, how can I make this all right? What can I do to make this all right? You know, who can I talk to? Shall I write a letter? You know, how can I influence this situation in a way that is going to you know, be all right, in the way that I think it needs to be all right? And frankly, you know, I might come up with a strategy and I might even act on that strategy. And the result is never terribly satisfactory. Because the thinking mind is actually very limited in its appraisal of situations. And it just sees a very narrow focus according to our experience. But when we, um, you know, when we're practicing as Buddhist practitioners, we actually have the capacity to tune into a to, to, to Dhamma, which is a much, much, much broader um, perspective, an infinite perspective. The Buddha, the Dhamma, the Sangha, you know, the, this this wonderful triple refuge that we have. We really tune in to that, which is not about the thinking mind then our response uh, can come from a much deeper place, a place of real knowing and understanding. And it may be that all we can do is just to hold steady with a particular situation. Say we know somebody who's really sick, just to hold them in the heart, just hold steady. May that being be well, that, may that being enjoy a sense of inner steadiness, a sense of inner ease because that's what's going to allow um, healing. That's what's going to allow a sense of resolution of whatever difficulty it is that they may be experiencing. Not a lot of ideas.
sometimes because we have these bodies, we've been born into these bodies, these bodies are, are subject to, to sickness, they're subject to pain, subject to death, you know, all of these bodies are going to die. So we can't stop that, we can't prevent that. But we can support, you know, through our kindly intention, we can support a sense of inner calm, a sense of inner clarity, a sense of inner ease. That if the body is, you know, has the capacity to heal, if it you know, has, has the resources to heal, you know, it will heal. That's nature's way, it will heal given the right conditions. If it's time for it to die, then it will die. And there can be a sense of inner ease, a sense of perspective, a sense of calm, a sense of clarity around that process. This is the best we can wish for somebody who's dying, who's in that state. It's not that something has gone wrong, that the body is dying, it's nature following its course. Human beings will struggle. There will be conflict in the world. There'll be domestic conflict, disagreements in families, uh, confusion through misuse of drugs, alcohol, and so on. Terrible situations, situations of deprivation, of poverty. It's unlikely that any of us can make that right in terms of ending the conflict or uh, providing what is needed uh, for somebody who's in a situation of deprivation. But again, our kindly intention from the heart can influence in some subtle way, can bring about a sense of um, inner calm, inner steadiness. It can enable a resolution. We don't know, but my sense is that this is possible. What we can know is that it can enable a sense of resolution of our own inner conflict, inner agitation, inner fear, can promote a sense of inner steadiness. So that in our lives, in our interactions with others, this is what we promote, this is what we spread in our society. But this heart of kindness, heart of goodness, is a very powerful medicine for ourselves and for all beings, including those that we contact every day. Rather than generating fear, confusion, hatred, negativity, ill will, blaming, judging, criticizing, can we bring forth the Brahma Viharas, the heart of kindness, the heart of compassion, the heart of joyfulness and serenity? Can this be our contribution to these impossible situations that we read about, that we hear about, that are happening on the planet at this time? So I wish you peace and joy in your practice, a sense of ease and well-being. And we have some time now um, for questions and I'm very happy just to sit for a few moments see what arises and you can either send a chat message to Nick and he'll read it out or you can raise your real or your virtual hand and uh, ask your question. Nick will invite you to unmute and, and, and ask your question so 
please just enjoy a moment and let's see what, what comes up for you. Please feel free to ask a question. It's always good to remember that um, <clears throat> if you ask a question for yourself, you're also asking it for many others. So please feel free to share your thoughts, maybe reflections on Ajahn Chandasiri's reflections. I always like to say it. Someone called iPhone. Not sure who iPhone is, but uh, please uh, do ask your question. Uh, you have to unmute yourself. Oh, hello. Hi, my name is Manisha. Um, I just have a question regarding um, sending good merit and wishing well. Um, if someone has passed away, are you still able... Um, to do that in your your meditation or is that something that you wouldn't advise particularly i would say um definitely you can most certainly um that's something i would strongly encourage again when someone has died there can be a sense of well deep sorrow obviously but also a sense of helplessness and a sense of concern, wishing, you know, wanting, wanting the best for them, may they go well. And so um, this is something that is strongly encouraged. In fact, there's a practice called um, a dedication of, of merits, sharing the blessings of our lives. Um, and you can do this just in your daily life, you know, just like dedicating your, your life or particular actions for their welfare you can do it in your meditation as you suggest um, you can also uh, one of the things that the traditional asian countries do they they um they like to um offer dana so they come to the monastery in fact whole families will get together and prepare a big meal that they come offer to the to the sangha and with the request that we we dedicate uh, or we, we, we chant blessings and, and they can dedicate the blessings of, of that good action uh, for the welfare of the deceased. And they'll do it like shortly after somebody's died, maybe on the anniversary of their death. And uh, so it, it's a very helpful counterbalance to the natural grief that we feel when somebody has died, a sense of grief and helplessness and uh, kind of separation, uh, when we do something and dedicate the blessings, it, it kind of helps us to feel in touch, to feel that we're actually helping them on their way. So there's a sense of connection and a sense of joy. Uh, so when, when uh, say, like I, I know Sri Lankan people, when they get together, you know, after somebody's died, they have this, they, 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 they spend all night like preparing a meal and they kind of tell stories and they laugh. And, and then they just, you know, they remember something that makes them feel sad and then they all cry. It's a very uh, lovely way of people to be together. Very simple and you could say, well, it's just superstitious, but I, I'm actually pretty certain that it's something that is enormously beneficial. So you're not asking them to come back. You're not saying, oh, I wish you hadn't gone. You're saying, may you go well, may you go well. And here's, here's a bit more merit to help you on your way. You know, have some of my, my merits. And uh, rather than being worried about whether you've got enough merits, just, just share what you have and it'll just keep multiplying. And uh, so this is something that I, I would definitely recommend. So that's, a, that's a, uh, a lovely question and I hope that uh, is helpful, what I've said. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. 
Is there anything else? Right. Hello, hello, sister. Uh, thank you very much for those uh, wonderful reflections. I think, um, like everybody else, I do feel really overwhelmed with uh, all the terrible things that are going on in the world. And I do do a lot of meta. But I think that um, also I try just not to watch the news very much at all. So <laughs> it'd be just... I'll have a little glimpse of it through my through kind of my fingers once a day, but I find it's just too much to take. Really, I think everything seems to be in such a state of difficulty and horror. Really, yes, but I do. I do completely appreciate and agree completely that our offering, our holding the whole thing in a in a a loving heart and offering compassion uh, is, I think, a, a really good way to, 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 to help, even, even to help solve the, the issues that are causing such difficulty. So thank you very much for that. And I think one of the, one of the major difficulties is that there's just so much access to the media mm. um, these days. I mean, you can spend your whole day watching news and some of it's good and a lot of it's very disturbing and concerning and I think it's really really important to make sure you have a life of your own that is not completely bound up with what you hear through the media so you know in in your own life you know you get up in the morning you clean your teeth you wash you have breakfast you you know, you, you live in a place, you look after the place where you live, you have interactions with other people. And to, to make that your life, and certainly it's not that you, you, you don't shut out the rest, but I think what you say, I, I like what you say about looking through your fingers, it's sort of like you, sort of, you, know, you, 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 you take in as much as you can, you know, as much as you can bear, but don't, don't expose yourself to it all the time because either, you get completely overwhelmed or you just get numb um, and just don't really feel anything anymore. So being able to really ration yourself and keep in touch with your own life, your own body, your own mind, your own relationships, um, you know, because what you hear through the media is, you know, certainly it's happening somewhere, but it's almost like watching a movie, you know, it's, it's, it's there is a reality there, but you know the present moment reality, um, you know, of your cup of tea and um, you know, looking out of the window, being out in the rain, dealing with the weather. <laughs> you know, these are these are things that you can also experience. It's, uh, this, this is your life, um, and the rest is you know important information, but. Uh, yeah, ration yourself. That's uh, very, very skillful. You know, really, not too much. So, you know, even have a day off sometimes. <laughs> yeah. If something's really important, somebody will tell you. Like when I, when I go on retreat, sometimes I, you know, I, and it was very sweet, actually, this last retreat I did. And I died at the Queen passed away on the last day of my retreat. And the person staying here, she sent me a very nicely worded little note up with my breakfast, um, just letting me know. And you know, so somebody will tell you if there's something really important. I was very grateful for that. So I was able to just you know, take it in quietly and uh, digest this hugely significant death uh, that had taken place. Um, 
So usually you find out eventually. Is there anything else that anybody would like to ask about? Mariano, yeah, please feel free to unmute. Thank you. Thank you. Can you hear me all right? Yes, right. thank you. Very good. Uh, very recently, I've been uh, through a process of downsizing, you know, moving house and uh, more suitable for my age. And uh, that was uh, quite something because you need to let go of a number of things. And uh, over the winter, I will need to get let go of even more of them. But what struck me was, uh, it is not just the physical side. We've got so many goals, uh, spiritual aims and goals and ideas and plans. And what is your thought about that? Because that seems to be a bit more subtle, you know, that hanging on to a whole uh, phantasmagoria of uh, spiritual uh, whatever. <laughs> yes, it's a. Um, uh, I think simplification is very, very good. And I think sometimes, sometimes it takes a little bit of time, but I think your intention is wonderful um, to have the intention to simplify, the intention to let go. And, you know, give it time. Consider, do I really need this? What does it mean to me? And my sense is that as you consider in this way, what you'll, what you'll begin to find is, actually, this is a burden. I don't need this. I can let it go. Things will be much lighter. I'd feel much freer without it. It was interesting when I... Um, first became a nun, because people said, oh, you have to give up all these things. How, how do you manage? And frankly, by the time it was time to give them up, I was ready to give them up. I didn't need them anymore. I didn't want them anymore. And when I gave them up, it was a relief. So my sense is that what you're doing is exactly right. Um, just attuning to, to the kind of uh, hesitation about giving them up, and just giving it a little bit of time and then just considering, I'm gonna feel so much lighter once I've let go of this. So each time just see it as a gradual, a gradual lightening. Um, and then to also consider, well, and this is not supposed to be a morbid thought, but consider, well, when I die, I won't need this anyway. What, what, what do I need when I, when I die? You know, I don't need anything really. And to have a pure heart is probably the best kind of resor uh, resource for, for, for as you're dying, a, a pure, clear heart that's not kind of grasping onto things, that's not frightened of letting things go. So just considering in that way is a very, uh, can be a very helpful uh, encouragement to just keep, keep letting go, keep clearing out, you know, physically clearing out of things, and then also with, with these other um, ideas and your position and your, you know, the things that you really don't need. So um, I heard a wonderful story when I was traveling in India years ago, I met this, uh, she was kind of a nun and she had an aunt, had had an aunt who was a nun. And she said, when this aunt died, who'd been a nun for I don't know how many years, all they found, the only possession they found <laughs> Was a, was a plastic rosary in one of the drawers where she was living. That was all she had. Oh, gosh, that would be amazing. I have to say, I've got a wee way to go myself in that regard, but um, it's certainly something to consider and something to, to celebrate. The more you can give up, the better. But be careful, because sometimes if you're too much of a hurry, you give up things, oh, I wish I hadn't given that up. That was really special. And uh, so some, occasionally, occasionally there can be a little regret, but um, I say 90% of the time, no, you don't need it. 
and I just see it as, as a relief. So, uh, yeah. Thank you. We don't really need an awful lot of the things that we have. <laughs> so I celebrate your downsizing. <laughs> I, I, Thank you I, very I, much. I wish you well with it. <laughs> So we'd have time for one more question, or we could do the, the closing chant. Give another moment pause in case anything arises. I have a question. Yes, Lauren. Hi, thank you, sister, for being here. This is awesome to be meditating with you and practicing with you. Um, I've noticed in your bios, it always says that you um, appreciate contact with contemplative Christians and people of other faiths. And um, I'm curious how you might balance your, your home being as a Buddhist nun with input from other traditions. I, I came to Theravada Buddhism through Hinduism and many years of Hinduism and Sufism and Judaism and contemplative Christianity. And I'm a multi-faith spiritual director, so I work with people from all different religious paths. And at times I find it very hard to stay grounded in my Buddhist path because I feel so pulled by, I, I am so interested in all the different lenses from which people approach their spirituality. So just wondering, have you, how do you, do you practice more than one tradition? Do you, do you, how do you incorporate your interest into your practice? That's an interesting question because um, for quite a number of years, I actually found it quite challenging, quite difficult doing say Christian Buddhist retreats. You know, I would mm -hmm. uh, teach alongside a Christian nun or a Christian monk. And I did find it quite challenging because um, I guess I was just a little bit wibbly wobbly with my with my Buddhist um, faith, I suppose. And I've just found over the years, and it's it's changed. And so I'm really very very content and um, quite sure that this is what is working for me. That this is my chosen way. And at the same time, I can see the beauty of each of the other ways. And that, like you, I, I came through many different uh, paths. Um, and, but then when I found Buddhism, this particular way, I was just so relieved to have found it because it, it kind of ticked all the boxes. It answered all my questions in ways that each of the others had not quite been able to do not because of any lack within them, but just the circumstances of my life as it was, the people I met and so on. Um, there were ways that it, it, it didn't, that, that this seemed to um, sit more comfortably with me. So I appreciate your, your, your question. And my sense is that over time, um, there'll be less of a, a doubt, less of a concern, and more of a kind of capacity to stay, you know, really rooted uh, within your particular um, place of, of mindfulness and presence, mm -hmm. and to be able to celebrate each of the different ways and, and to celebrate the fact that, you know, there are other people who are enjoying uh, those particular practices. Um, and there can be a very rich exchange. I mean, what I found with some of them, there are some things I hear people saying certain things, I think, oh, that's a complete load of rubbish. You know, how can you possibly believe that? That certainly comes into my mind, but of course I don't say it because that wouldn't be very helpful. <laughs> um, but I also can see that sometimes it's just a matter of translation. Um, and just, you know, it's like, it's about respect and recognizing the um, sincerity, the integrity of each person's practice, uh, whatever their tradition, and um, encouraging, you know, right speech, right action, right livelihood, encouraging people to, and whether you call it Buddhism or whether you call it Christianity, whatever you call it, 
you know, encouraging people towards what is what is good, and what brings harmony and uh, what brings kindness, compassion into the world. I mean, these are the, the values that we celebrate that, and that, that each of the faiths has in common when it's properly understood. So I'm not at all interested in, in the division or um, conflict between those of different faiths. I'm much more interested in celebrating what we share. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. The reflections I can offer that I've, yeah, what, what, the way I see it. Thank you. Well, thank you for your question. Mm -hmm. So I think we're, we're out of time now. And the chant I thought we would do, I was going to suggest doing it in Pali, but I think maybe we'll do it in English. Um, if that's possible, one do the, the reflection on universal well being. Um, may I abide in well-being, which is uh, on page, if we could do page 41 rather than say page 40, I think that would be helpful. Because this chant actually is a kind of um, reflection of all of the things that we've been talking about this evening. Um, reflections wishing ourselves well, free from affliction, hostility, ill will, anxiety, which means, you know, can I really find ways to resolve these things in my own heart to maintain well-being in myself? And then from that place, wishing that others may be free from um, ill will and anxiety and confusion and so on. And then uh, may they be released from all suffering celebrating the brightness, the beauty. May they not be separated from the good fortune they have attained. And just reflecting on the law of Kamma. This is actually a chant about the Brahma Viharas, Metta, Karuna, Mudita, Upeka. So I would like if we could chant this together and then um, we'll do the closing homage. We'll do that in Pali as we've agreed. And then, um, if people would like to take some time to unmute and say bye bye, we can we can do that. Uh, and just to mention before we we do that, um, <clears throat> next week my intention, um, and I hope it works out, is to actually come to the Buddhist Society uh, in the flesh, in person. Um, I'll be down south anyway, and so my I had thought that would be a good opportunity to experiment with a hybrid. So I'll be, I'll be there, and there'll also be opportunities for people to tune in via Zoom. So let's chant the reflection on universal well-being. <clears throat> <clears throat> now let us chant the reflection on universal well-being. May I abide in well-being. In freedom from affliction, in freedom from hostility, in freedom from ill will, in freedom from anxiety, and may I maintain well-being in myself. May everyone abide in well-being, in freedom from hostility, in freedom from ill will, in freedom from anxiety, and may they maintain well-being in themselves. May all beings be released from all suffering, and may they not be parted from the good fortune they have attained. When they act upon intention, all beings are the owners of their action and inherit its results. 
The future is born from such action, companion to such action, and its results will be their home. All actions with intention, be they skillful or harmful, of such acts they will be the acts. Well, thank you very much, Sister, for leading this evening's teaching class. Much appreciated by us all. I hope I speak. I'm sure I speak for everybody. But thank you and look forward to seeing you next week in person for those who can make it to the Buddhist Society.